Hi, and welcome to another episode of Crank Your Damn Jets to 11. Um, today, what I want to talk about is uh, Bitwarden, which I absolutely love, and uh, security in general. I'm going to allow myself to talk about security in general. So again, uh, I want to point out that th this is not a review of Bitwarden or... Uh, anything of the sort. Uh, if you want to see a review that is going to go over all the features, you should look at another video and then come back here. What I'm giving you is just my impression of Bitwarden, and I have uh, a little bit of an editorial about uh, security in general. Um, and the editorial is born out of discussing security with folks online. Um, so a lot of times someone comes and says, um, I have this, I've installed this thing to improve the security of my passwords or my house or my car or anything. And then someone else comes running with a scenario that defeats that security. And that's not at all how you should think about security. It's not an, a, an all or nothing proposition. It's not like here's the security that is going to save you from everything in the world and Otherwise, it's not worth doing anything and you just should just leave your front door unlocked and so on and so forth. I don't think you should think about it that way. I should you, th you should think about it in terms of risk. You know, what's the risk of somebody getting your password? What's the risk of somebody walking in your front door? And layers. So it's like an onion with layers of security. Uh, and the goal is to discourage somebody from uh, breaching your security. It's not, so again, it's not an all or nothing proposition. You want to discourage people. Something very, very, very simple, lock your door. And, and someone will say, what, you lock your door? But what if somebody uses a bomb key and picks your door? Locking your door is already something. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. It is already something. Locking your door will prevent drunken fools from walking into your house by mistake. Uh, and I take myself as an example. I was once young and a drunken fool. And um, coming back from the club, I stopped on the wrong floor and I opened, I was trying to open the wrong door. I didn't open the wrong door because luckily the people that were inside had locked the door. But then I was like, what's going on? Why is it not working? And then I realized that it was not the right door number. <laughs> and then I went to my apartment and I opened the door. Everything was fine. But if I, if those folks had not locked their door, I would have walked in into their house and then it would have been problematic for everyone else. At the very least, it would have been embarrassing for me and for them. It's like, what are you doing in our house? Um, and at worst, I mean, it could have been it could have been worse. Uh, I mean, they could have tried to defend themselves. They could have called the police. I could have been in a world of trouble. So just locking the door is already something. It's better than nothing. And it will at least prevent drunkards from walking into your living room. Um, and then you can you you build from there. You know. Uh, so on on my house, I. I don't have the lock from um, the local hardware store because those locks are terrible. I've seen videos where somebody said, well, you can modify it and improve it. Uh, I think it was a lock picking lawyer that was saying that. And it's fine. I mean, if you want to do that, do that. Go buy a lock and improve on, on it by adding some stuff. And maybe it's going to be good enough. I, I think when I bought my locks, that was, I didn't know about that that principle, so I didn't even think about it. And I'm not a lock picking person, so I don't know anything about. I mean, I watch the videos, but I don't, I don't have the skill. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't have the locks from the hardware store. My locks are imported. Uh, and at that time, when I did it, there was a huge gap between in, in security features between what you can get at the hardware store, I should put it like this, what you can get at the hardware store, which is at the bottom, and what you can get uh, from a specialized place. Um, 
And so the locks I have are, are very special and I had many keys made and they're stored safely. Um, because if we have to provide a key to anyone, we have to, it, 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 we cannot go to Home Depot and ask them to make a new key. It, it's impossible. They don't have the they don't have the material for it, uh, so we have to have the keys. And and so far we've been fine. Um, and then and then when you say that online, there's always somebody coming. Yeah, but what if someone takes an axe to your door, or what if someone uh, you know runs through the wall? And they could do in our house. They could you could open a wall and and walk into the house. And to that, I have multiple answers, one of which is, and I don't know, it could be an urban legend that companies don't, that insurance companies don't want to pay if there's no sign of uh, breaking, but I don't think it's the case. I think if there's no sign of breaking, they're gonna say, well, you forgot to lock the door and, and you're going to be in, in trouble. So I do not want somebody to come into my house by using a bump key, which is likely with the locks they have at the hardware store, or using um, or picking my lock, even I want if somebody comes into my house, I want it to be visible. I want it to. I want the police when they come to know that somebody broke in, not that somebody just walked in. So for me, it has to be. If you if you come into my house, you have to leave damage. Uh, that the police can assess and then tell the insurance, yeah, somebody broke into the house and then have trouble with the insurance. Um, so that, that's one thing. The other thing is, again, uh, security is not, uh, not all on or off thing. It's layered. So besides the lock, I have other devices, security devices in my house to uh, prevent thieves from coming in. The lock is only one part of the deal. So they could break down the wall, but they would still run into trouble. Um, and and so, you know, that's how you have to think about it. That's dissuasion also. So for instance, uh, if you live in the city, there's all, and you're in a, an apartment block and there's a lot of people coming around you're going to run into people who are just looking for the quick buck, uh, the easy target. And they're going to try doors. They're going to, they might use a, a bump key or they may um, just uh, break down the door and they're going to, uh, not, not break down the door, but they may use a bump key. They may pick your lock. They sometimes, in a, in a block apartment, if the if the locks have all been taken from the same uh, hardware store, a key that works in one lock might work in other locks. And it's not the company that said, "Well, we're going to make the keys, you know, work in all the locks." It's just it's the randomness of the key shape and and tolerances and stuff like that is going to make it so that one key works in another lock, even though it shouldn't. Um, so if you're in an apartment. In town, there are people around you that have the opportunity to get to your door. If they can just use a bump key and get in, then they're in. Uh, they to to get around to prevent that, you need to have something more secure um, to lock your door uh, that will require at least more picking skill. If if uh, they are into lock picking or you know they will require them to bash the door in or something like that and that's just where an opportunity comes into into play it's like the less opportunistic your house is or your apartment is the more chances you have of not being uh, invaded by somebody who wants to steal your stuff and um you know i i want to point out that i've in my life we've had two break in, two break-ins I've had one when I was a kid, uh, and my mother was responsible for the safety of the house, and we did we didn't have much safety. Uh, I think the, t the 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 thief might have had to break the side lock of our of our house, 
Um, th there was no alarm system. There was no almost nothing. It was not very hard. I mean, and even sometimes I broke into the house. It was not very hard to, to break into that house. Um, and another time, another break-in was, well, I was not there myself, but it was my roommate to be like one week before I moved and somebody uh, broke into his apartment. Um, and I don't think anything was stolen, uh, but it was just luck. Um, and it must have been somebody nearby that broke in. So those things happen. And the least opportunity you give to the, the, the person who wants to do you harm, the more likely they are going to go uh, find another target to attack. Uh, I mean, it's it's not it's not fun. I don't wish anyone to have a thief come into their house and steal stuff. But that's the fact of life that they are going to pick the easiest target. And if you start hardening your defenses, they're not going to look at you. They're going to look at something else. Uh, so that was the editorial about security in general. Now, Bitwarden. I absolutely love Bitwarden. I think it's great. And then when you start talking about Bit Bitwarden, you often have some uh, clown that comes out of the woodwork and, and starts spewing out scenarios. And the ultimate scenario is, what if the folks at Bitwarden are not on your side after all, but they want to uh, screw you over? You know, you you're giving them all the information. Maybe they, they substituted the binary at the last. You know, the source code is online. You can look at it. Maybe they substituted the binary at the last second when they produce the tool that you're using on your computer, and now you're using a corrupted tool that sends them information. And, 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 and. And again, it's not an all an all on or all, all off situation. Um, I think Bitwarden offers the most security of all systems. I will absolutely not use at this point because it's op Bitwarden is open source. I will not ever, ever, ever again return to a closed source system. It's not going to happen um, because you cannot audit it. Um, you don't know what it does. You don't know if the principles that are used are sensible or not. You don't know if they left a back door for themselves to start looking at your information. You don't know anything. Uh, but then again, as I said, there's the, the clown that comes out of the woodwork and says, what, what if Bitwarden is against you? But that reply applies to all software under the sun. So. You say, I'm not going to use Bitwarden. And instead, I'm going to use VI and um, in the text file. First of all, have fun managing that. You're go you're go I, I think you're going to drive yourself crazy unless you just go to two sites. Um, I've, my system has evolved over the years. I've used other softwares and other methods. And, and one of my early methods was uh, a file. And I don't want to go back to that. But let's say you do that. Did you know that VI, if, and if you want to edit it for VI, the first of all, you have to uncrypt. If you encrypt your file, which you should, you're going to have to decrypt the file if you want to edit it with VI. And it has to get going to live somewhere. If you have a copy of the file on your regular disk, it's going to, um, that, that copy on the regular disk, even if you delete it, is going to be accessible uh, with tools. What you need to do is to shred it or to put it into a place where it's uh, like in RAM. It's possible to have a, a file in RAM on Linux. So you can mitigate the risks. But if you didn't pay attention to how VI works, you should know that when VI edits a file, it creates uh, backup files or swap files or so you can have a copy somewhere else that you didn't know about unless you know vi very very well and that's the problem that that people run into so and then independent of that if you use vi you don't know what the vi authors did they could do the same thing that the bitwarden uh, authors could do and and be evil and send data somewhere else uh, you just do not, you cannot control this. I mean, 
you cannot control this in a sensible fashion. You can always come up with scenarios where you run VI in a VM and then any and then and then it is there and then, but it becomes unusable. And, and that's the big attraction with Bitwarden is that I have Bitwarden on my Chrome browsers. So it works on my laptop, which is over there. It works on my Chromebook, which is over here. It works on my phones. It works, um, and, and and there's a double. It has a multiple identities because you can have the extension for the browser, and then you can install the app for Chrome OS, uh, oh, not Chrome OS, but Android and Chrome actually. Um, so it exists as an Android app, and then if it exists as an Android app, it means that when you have an Android application, which is not a browser application, but an Android application that asks you for a password, you have the option of going into Bitwarden and slapping the password in. So it works with everything. And I've used before, before but just before Bitwarden, it was with KeePass X or KeePass CX. I, I don't remember which version of KeePass I was using, but I was using KeePass basically. And, and one of the problems with KeePass that I was finding is that there was no, it was not supported everywhere I wanted. And it was a bit of a problem. Maybe now it, maybe now they fixed it, I, I don't know. But it was a bit of a problem. I found the interface to be arcane. And um, so I, I moved all my stuff to Bitwarden. And now I pay for it. And I don't need I don't need to pay for it. I think they're they're I don't remember how much they ask. It might be ten dollars a year. I think that's the lowest subscription rate I'm paying right now for subscriptions to different things. Um, last I checked, I think it was ten dollar a year. It's it's almost nothing, and I don't need a subscription because I don't think I use any of the special features. Um, and you know it allows sharing, and, uh, and also a big a big thing for us, for for me and my wife, is that it allows sharing of information between her and I. So we have some accounts um, that are considered to be sh the home accounts. They they belong to the home instead of belonging to me or to my wife. And we have a few of them, and it's important to be able to share with her. Uh, for groceries, for instance, it's very banal, but if we order from Walmart or from the local grocery store and they send us emails and we have to uh, we have to log into the, the account, um, I, I don't create the account. No, it doesn't have the password is not password one, two, three, four, so that my wife can remember it. I generate something completely random and I save it in, in Bitwarden in the right place in the home um, folder where it syncs with my wife's stuff. And then if she needs to go and do something, she can find the login information there and um, she can do it. Uh, and it's important. That it, that it be uh, user friendly, because my wife has a low tolerance level for for interface nonsense. I also do, but I can I can I, I don't like shitty interfaces, but I can work around them. Whereas my wife at some point will just give up, uh, and I don't I don't blame her. I don't appreciate having to work around uh, um, a bad interface. But uh, yeah, being able to share actually, let, let me go back to what I was saying earlier about KeePass. Being able to share was one of the things that attracted me to, um, to uh, KeePass. And you can go online and you can see how to share with KeePass and there are ways. But when I was reading how to do it, it was like, whoa, this is, my wife is not gonna, is not gonna follow that. It's full of, of pitfalls and problems. Maybe again, they have fixed it now, but when I made the move, if you wanted to share with KeePass, it was very problematic. Um, you could do it, but I'm trying to set up systems that don't trip my wife and that she can use and that don't require her to grab me and say, hey, come over, I need to do this or I need to do that. Because part of the reasons I, I'm moving 
into that direction and Bitwarden was a big step towards that is um you know, I had the lymphoma and I was in chemo for a while and I was in the hospital for a while and I was in a bed in the hospital for a while. Every every round of chemo was a four-day visit at the hospital in the bed. Um, and then I had the stem cell transplant and I was not completely here. Uh, so it's important for me to have a system that works for me and my wife that we can share information together and that is not overly complicated for her to use. Um, and Bitwarden uh, does fit the bill. And you can imagine scenarios where the developers of Bitwarden go evil. Uh, I don't think I'm the biggest target that they could have. Um, and But if it were to happen, like if for some reason some money were to disappear mysteriously from one of my accounts, and unfortunately for them, because I use them and because they're supposed to be so secure, I think it would be one of the entities that the police would look at very carefully and quickly uh, to try to find out whether they they did something bad. Um, so they kind of have a, a target painted on their back. Uh, So, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any problems with, with Bitwarden. I've looked at the security. It's been audited by independent auditors um, to make sure that I, because some of the problems that security software has, it's not that the people doing it are evil. They're all well-intentioned, but they produce something where they don't realize that there's this and that vulnerability. And Bitwarden has been audited by an independent company. Um, it's possible that the that the independent company make, made mistakes, but it's possible for every piece of software you're going to use that has been audited, they can make mistakes. Uh, but they've they've certified it, and they found some places where there were problems, and they've explained what the problem was. And I know what the problem is, and it's not a problem for me. It could be a problem for someone else. Um, but I've also used, you know, thing, solutions like LastPass. Um, I don't think I've used another online system, but I've used LastPass. And to me, LastPass is like, it has less inherent, it has inherently less security than, than, uh, Bitwarden. Um, because people have not looked at it. Um. And it is held by a, you know, a private company and so on and so forth. Um, so you never know what what's going to be in there. Uh, so there are there are a few nits with Bitwarden. I, I wish the interface were working a bit differently and things like that. But uh, I would say there's nothing major that I've encountered that uh, where I, I'm blocked from doing something. Now, one thing that I don't like, and it's not a bit more than problem, it's an in a user interface problem on the, on the internet, is that some bright, some bright engineers think that it is a good idea to block cut and paste on password fields. I think this is the height of stupidity. Uh, and, and sometimes it prevents using um, your password manager. And because I'm super uh, concerned about safety, and then I, I have to painful, painstakingly type the password. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I'm going to painstakingly type password. Sometimes I'm going to do uh, to bring up the J uh, Java console and start mucking around with the the code that blocks uh, cutting and pasting, and I'm just going to cut and paste my password uh, as I normally do, and screw them. And it, there, I never had a problem doing that. I think if you're an engineer and you produce interfaces for people and you produce a login interface and you prevent cutting and pasting of passwords, you are an idiot. That's my opinion. You are free to come into the comments and explain why you're doing that. 
there's there's no good reason. I'm telling you right away, there's no good reason. So go ahead and try to explain why you're doing that in the comments. Um, it's going to be fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that was uh, yeah my my a little editorial on safety and uh, my recommendation of Bitwarden to everyone. Um, and the bigger it is, the I guess the less likely it is to to fall. I mean, there's no danger right now of it failing. I've not gotten any message that says we're about to go bankrupt or anything. Uh, so yeah, that that was uh, you know I just love Bitwarden and uh, you got my editor my editorial on safety that it's it's like an onion. You put multiple layers. You're trying to turn people away from the target to seek another target, and um, it's not an all or nothing proposition by any means. Because ultimately, if you if you say it's an all or nothing pr proposition, you have to be able to protect against all attacks, or it's completely pointless. Um, then there's no security. Period. Even locking your front door is is pointless. Because of course, the drunken guy who's trying to open your door, if he cannot open the door, he's going to bash it in or he's going to go get a chainsaw and cut the wall. <laughs> that's how that's how people think. Yes, absolutely. It makes total sense. Uh, no, that's not at all how people think. Uh, so you should think in terms of layers and turning them away. So this was my, uh, this was my positive feedback on uh, Bitwarden and security which also kind of turned into a bit of a rant, but anyway. Uh, so um, you can comment, you can thumb up, you can thumb down. Um, you can subscribe to the channel if you want more of my reflections. Uh, otherwise, uh, well, I'll see you later. And thank you for listening. <laughs>